What's up, YouTube? Connected to 7 here, bringing you all my personal thoughts and feelings on this past week of anime. And this week, it felt uh, quite that uh, week. It was still a good week, don't get me wrong. A week with Attack on Titan is gonna be good on every level, but some of the other shows I was really looking forward to this week, uh... And as such, I'll be starting off this week with some numerous dishonorable mentions. The first of which going to episode 7 of Sparrow's Hotel. Now, this show is very bad. But it's only three minutes per episode, and it consists of a good laugh or two, and the animation style actually was quite a flash from the past. But in this episode, they completely destroyed the style they previously had, and instead opted for a more modern, moe approach. Which is fine, but I was actually enjoying the oddness of the early 2000s animation in this show, so why, why'd you have to go and change it? But there are other shows I'd like to mention that had a much worse week than Sparrow's Hotel. One of which being episode 7 of Photocano. Initially, I thought I would like the Omigami SS format in this show, but then I realized there's only six girls and only six episodes left. One episode per girl is not enough, and that was displayed excellently in the horror that was episode 7 of Photocano. They destroyed the MC's character. I couldn't believe I was watching the same guy. With this episode, they brought the show to some very ridiculous levels, and I cannot say I guiltily enjoy it at all anymore. It's actually pretty horrid, and maybe some of the girls' arcs will have something substantial, but at the rate of one episode per girl, I just, I doubt it. That being said, nothing compares to my greatest disappointment of this week, that being episode 8 of Flowers of Evil. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't, did you guys see that? Yes, I know, I was excited too, that ending to episode 7, hold, it was like insane! So you know what they go and do for episode 8? They walk home. The eerie OSD plays as the shock of what just happened seeps in in silence and I was entranced into this scene. And then they continue it and they're just walking. The background doesn't, the background's not changing. Guys, guys, why is this? He, he, he's just walking. Gu guys, wh what are you doing? This, this is enough walking and you could really... Really? You're going to? Um, oh, you freaking kidding. I'm just gonna go get some water. <laughs> Are you kidding me? They're still walking? <laughs> this is a riot. Oh my god. Right? I for I'm sorry. I forgot the show was terrible. I'm sorry, guys. My bad. Nine minutes of walking in silence. Thanks, anime. Well, yes, so you see a week full of disappointments, but you see it does not stop quite yet. Because at number 5 this week we have episode 8 of Ori Emo Season 2. It was a fantastic, fun-filled episode of awesomeness. We got Kamenako, adorable little sisters, daytime handheld Kuranako Kimono, and fireworks. It was so cute and pretty and frilly and it made my little anime heart oh so full of happiness all the way through to the ending theme. But then in the after credits, Oriyama just goes and flashes me this. Oh, no, anime, no, you do not, you do this to me. You can't, not after everything, and no, please, no. Oriyama, but n number four, it's uh, episode eight of D Devil's Rabbit 2. And this episode was pretty insane. Our main cast, Marekis, had defeated the four Septon Trion and everything was coming up Millhouse. They even avoided the death flags and oh, oh no, oh, oh, no, okay, no, they didn't avoid the death flags. And as such, Joe, Mom, and Ronaldinho are no longer in the ending theme. Which, unfortunately, I can't say I was totally heartbroken at. I mean, Joe was awesome and so was Mom and I was sad to see them pass, but I didn't feel like the show gave them enough of a chance to really super duper develop. I like Keita who died way back when, I just truly didn't deeply feel for these three. However, this does lead me to question where else and with whomever else this show will go. Because if they touch my scarf girl. Thing is, I'm not too sure if I'm enjoying Devil Survivor as much as I should be each week. I'm going to continue it, but I just don't feel it all too strongly at all. At number 3 this week, we have episode 7 of Hen Neckle. This show has been phenomenal, yes, but very odd at the same time. Like I was feeling this episode with the moments with Tsukiko and the laughing at the Steel King silliness, and especially with the depressing scenes of Azuki. However, I just haven't decided whether or whether or not I like our main character. He's a good character, no doubt, but he just has that same thick-skulled harem lead attitude and it's just urgh. 
Even still, I have been thinking about this anime quite a bit, and it has me more sympathizing with him, maybe? There's just too many plot points for me to properly wrap my head around his character, and just this show as a whole, it's great, yes, but confusing, at least for me, who's most obviously overthinking it. At number two this week, we have episode eight of Attack on Titan. Wow, pretty crazy episode. Eren was indeed the OP Titan, as I predicted, but not in the way I thought he would be. Because out of the neck of the Titan, Eren's human form came with his arms regenerated. And again, like previous episodes, this just has me with many questions. How did his arms regenerate? Is only Eren in the neck of the Titan, or do other Titans have people in the neck? Does this explain why the weak spot of Titans is on their neck, and why the heck wasn't it previously explained that the other weak spot of Titans was up their butt? So many questions, so many episodes, so yeah, I'm not worried at all. I'm actually pretty hopeful for this show. I think they will answer most of my questions, so yeah, I'm not worried. Especially that butt question, though. That needs to be investigated deeper. But other than that super duper plot point, we also had Arm of the Tactician, that gun scene from the opening, Return of the Cute Titan, Potato Girl, and Annie, who I do really want to know more about. Also, Pixisu, where are you? And at number one this week, we have episode eight of Suisse no Gargantia. This, in my humble opinion, was a very well done episode. I can feel the superior storytelling touches this show has, and I really enjoy them. Even though the show isn't attack on tightening, plot twisting all over the place, it's still keeping me engaged, alert, and focused, maybe even more so than attack on Titan. Gargantia doesn't need cliffhangers every week, it just wants us to be invested into its characters. Which is something I felt stronger from Gargantia than anything I'm watching this season. Even though it's not Devil Survivor killing them off or Mouse and breaking them down, it still has that charm with the plot, characters, and development which I enjoy and agree with open arms in my anime. So thank you Gargantia for just getting me full on board with your latest batch of episodes and I greatly look forward to whatever sort of ride you may have in store for me. But what did you guys think of this week in anime? Did you get high on thighs from the latest Aiura or are you getting some nosebleeds from the latest swimsuit? Nyoko-san action. Be sure to comment down below with all those feelings, thoughts, and reactions to everything you saw this week as I just enjoy reading them and responding to them. If you enjoy these weekly countdown videos, please don't forget to like it as it makes me very happy and subscribe if you haven't already for weekly countdowns and more. But I'm Kanata D7, thank you so very much for watching my video and have a good one.